hi and welcome to A World of Words. I'm Vanessa and today I'm going to talk about unique magic systems in literature. As you may or may not know, I am an aspiring author and I like to write fantasy. I write either young adult or new adult fantasy and one of the things about fantasy is magic. If you do have a lot of magic in your story, chances are that you also have created at least a ma one magic system or you have some sort of magic system in your world. I was kind of looking into that because not too long ago I was creating a magic system of my own that I wanted to be that may be completely different from other things I've seen but like unique enough that it stands out a little bit because I have several different fantasy based worlds so I want the magic in them to be different. Long story short I have looked into a lot of different magic systems in literature. Some of these I have read and some of them I haven't read and so I just wanted to talk about different magic systems in literature because I came across some really cool sounding ones and then this is going to have a part two to it where I will talk about what I did or things I thought about when I created my own magic system and a lot of that is kind of based off of this original like research that I did or like books that I thought about with interesting magic in it. So that was kind of a long intro. So for the books that I haven't read, a lot of this is from an article that I found on a website called fantasyfaction.com. So I will leave a link to that article below because I'm not going to talk about every single book that was mentioned in that article. I'm just going to talk about the ones that stood out most to me and that I personally found most interesting. But actually, there are a lot of books listed on that article. Everything I talk about is not from that article. I also have books that I have heard of the magic system and that intrigued me and then there are also of course books that I have read and those magic systems that were really interesting and this is not going to cover every single magic system ever. It's just some that I think are stand apart from each other and that I think stand apart from a lot of other fantasy that I've read. So I'm going to get right into them. So the first type of interesting magic system I came across was words that are literally magic and float around the user as they cast spells. So like they, they float around you as you cast a spell. That's pretty cool. And that is from a book I haven't read called Spellwright by Blake Charlton. Not only can words be used as tattoos and written in books, they are also tangible things that a human can choke on when caught in the throat. The way the magic languages appear differs depending on which specific language we're addressing. However, it's safe to say that the words of these languages are physically visible. When a spell is weaved, there might be rings of text when an item is imbued with or created by magic, there might be words and letters visible across its surface. If a person casts a spell, it's essential that the words are fully formed and correctly written. That sounds really interesting. I'm definitely interested in reading that book. So I really like how like the language is so tied to the magic in that example. That's really interesting and I really haven't seen anything else like that. Another type of magic system involves colors. Well, this particular example of it comes from The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. Again, I haven't read this book, but it sounds really cool based on this description of the magic. The light it was from the Lightbringer series and it hinges on light and how it is split into colors. Magic wielders, or I guess they're called drafters in this book, draw power from whatever color of light they can control as well as a substance called Luxin from this light and use it. It's a kind of scientific magic system. The colors kind of have to do with their personality or the light has to do with their personality and some people can control like one color, other people can control more than one color and your ability to like, use the light depends on your mood and personality it seems it says. And there is a, the addition of a ruling figure who can draft in all colors, a prism, presents a magic system both fun and fascinating. It also makes it so magic itself is not a quick fix. After all, what happens when the sun sets? So that sounds really interesting. I like that they kind of use the scientific prism of colors to create the magic system and how personality and mood has to do with how you do the magic. I think that's really interesting because a lot of the time we don't actually think about the person's mood. Like it's either you can do the spell or you can't do the spell. It's kind of like 
expecto patronum in Harry Potter when Harry has to actually be happy and think happy thoughts in order to produce the Patronus. I thought that sounded really interesting. I love colors so I of course found that interesting. And then there's an example from a book that I really really want to read and that is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell and in this book I heard that pop culture and jingles can become spells and I think that is just so adorable. Usually in books magic and stuff is related to being old and like ancient like in Harry Potter they use quills and stuff and nobody uses technology but I love how pop culture and the modern world is brought into the magic system and that like that helps create the magic system. I've also heard people complain that that makes it sort of seem like cheap and stupid but I haven't read this book, so I can't 100% say my feelings on it. It's something I will definitely talk about once I read it, but I just think that is adorable and I feel like I needed to mention it. I kind of wish I had thought of that, but obviously I can't do that now since I'd be copying. Unless I read it and come up with something completely different. But yeah, I really like that idea. I think it's really fun. For a book I have read, there are the witches from Truth Witch, and all of these people have very different types of magic. There is Safi, the main character, is a truth witch, so she can tell when you're lying to her. There is a word witch, which was something slightly different than a truth witch. I forget exactly what the word witch did. And then the really interesting one was Isolt, I can never pronounce her name, Safi's best friend, is a thread witch. So like she can see your emotions as like threads of color. Which again draws to like the color emotion. It's kind of like that what I just talked about with like the colors are part of magic but like hers but not really because that was all about bending light. Like different emotions were different colors like I think love was red and, and yeah so like sadness is a color and then anger is a color and she could like, see all of that around people and that was really cool. They're like witches for every little thing. It was almost comical at times how many different witches they were for like different little tasks and stuff. So I thought that was really interesting and I really like how some witches like the truth witch were less common than other ones and it was just a really interesting world and just a really good book in general so I highly recommend reading truth witch because I love it and the magic in that is really interesting. For another one I read we have the Grisha Trilogy by Leigh Bardugo. That one we have Grisha which actually reminded me a little bit of Truth Witch just because some of the specifics I felt were a little similar. Not exact, not really but kind of. <laughs> so there are the Corporalaki, I can never pronounce these. The heart renders and the healers. Oh, were the heart renders? Yeah, those are the ones who like, they can like reach out and like grab your heart and like make it stop beating and stuff. And then there are the healers who obviously can heal people. And then there are the etheroki, the squalors, inferni, and tide makers. I need to reread this series, I swear. One of the material. Oh, the fabricators. And those can like change appearances and things like that. I'm forgetting the details. I don't know why. I guess it has been a pretty long time since I, think I read Six of Crows back in August of 2016. They have really interesting powers. They're just people who can do all sorts of different things and it's pretty cool and I like the way they're described as slightly different. Like she creates the different like sets of them and a lot of them when they're in this place where everybody's learning how to use the magic they are separated by like what they are and they'd wear different colors to distinguish the different types of Grisha. All of that was very interesting and I really like the different powers in that world. It ranged a lot from very helpful and kind of light and cool to pretty dark like the ones who can reach out and make you die instantly. That's kind of dark. And then I read about a book that said that magic and power comes from the stars so different people had powers at different times of like day at different like, times of year and stuff, which is really interesting, but I, I cannot remember what book this was, like what book this is from that said that. So if you know, let me know, because I came across it and wrote it down, but I didn't write down the book. <laughs> but that's also really interesting that magic comes from the stars and that like, the time affects what magic you can do. And then obviously we have the Shadow Hunters from Mortal Instruments, the Infernal Devices, and the Dark Artifices by Cassandra Clare. And their magic comes from the runes that they draw on themselves, and each different rune represents a different power. 
Uh, that's also a very interesting and unique magic system if you think about it because certain runes they stay like the Parabatai rune but certain runes do not stay and the Iratsi <laughs> can never pronounce that one the healing rune all of like the fighting runes this for speed and strength and stuff those usually wear off they have to keep drawing them over and over again which I think is a really interesting way to deal with it it's kind of like casting a spell over and over again but not exactly since they can't like do magic, they can just like uh, uh, enhance their own like natural abilities, which I think is pretty cool. It's not like in the TV show where you can shape shift, and it's not like in the TV show where you can do a heat sensing rune. They actually have like a demon sensing device. If you watch the TV show, the magic is a lot different than it is in the books, but in the books, it's like it just like enhances your natural abilities. I'm pretty sure it just enhances natural abilities. Cause none of them can like shoot like laser beams out of their eyes. They're not a rune for like flight and stuff like that. And then I'm just going to get to general magic systems. There are a whole bunch where there's elemental magic. That's in a whole bunch of different books so I'm not even gonna bother mentioning a specific one. Earth, fire, water, and air and a lot of times you could be you could change this water can be like water or ice and then earth it's usually earth sometimes earth is like plants and stuff but there's elemental magic which is always fun because using the elements is cool i love things with elemental magic especially avatar the last airbender because that shit was amazing i have plans for something with elemental magic but that's not gonna happen for a while because i have a timeline of when what series are going to be written and things and that one's two or three notches down from the three that I'm writing right now so that one's gonna be a while the elemental one and also it's kind of a mess so I might have to do a lot of work on that one dogs are barking and then finally we have the classic magic which is like spell casting and potion making and all of that and this is often either with wands or without wands. So like in Harry Potter, obviously, they use wands to cast spells and do everything. But also in a lot of magic books and movies and things, you don't have to use a wand. And I personally kind of prefer magic without a wand because I just think it's irritating to have to hold a wand all the time. And wands are kind of awkward to carry around. Like Harry's always dropping his wand. I just think they're a little bit annoying and I guess that kind of makes it more like you can drop your wand and then you can't do your spells but I'm like why don't you have like that surfboard thing wait for your wand like so you like drop it and then it like just dangles instead of falls across and also if you have that they can't do expelliarmus on you because there'd be like a magic thing to keep it from flying I don't know I just feel like there's a better way to hold your wand and keep it from flying everywhere. But that's that's not even the point of this video. So that's it for this video where I talk about magic systems that I have come across or that I've heard about. I know there are many many more. So stay tuned for my video about how you might go about using inspiration from other magic systems to create your own unique magic system and things that you might want to think about when you're also creating a magic system. If you have read a book that has an interesting magic system, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to read it. Or if you can think of any other magic systems that you haven't read in literature, but that like you think would be cool, that's awesome too. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I upload new videos on Mondays, plus the occasional surprise video, so please subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. And thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye!